two stories remain as unbeatens collide for the title. Could it get any more dramatic? Jim Harbaugh and the Wolverines are looking to finish the mission, while Michael Penix Jr. and the Huskies hope to write their perfect ending. The final chapter, and the stakes couldn't be higher. A new playoff champion will be crowned the College Football Playoff National Championship. Number one Michigan versus number two Washington, Monday at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. at it again for the first time in 2024 welcome gentlemen i'm cody bradley i'm here with thad bell and robert russert we had a couple weeks off we took one off for the holiday and then uh, last week we were we had our editors meeting so we were busy working on internal things but it is very good to be back a lot to talk about so let's just go ahead and jump right into it what do you say no time to dilly dally that jump oh jump. no dilly dally okay i was, I was ready to dilly dally well, there's uh, some relevant news. This was last night and today. This seems to be developing. The Athletic is reporting a work stoppage is imminent, quote unquote imminent, for MLS pro referees. That imminent. I love when we get to call something imminent. It's like it, it, there's like the word imminence, and it has that kind of same gravitas. It feels big. It does. The, the, the Your gravitas. imminence, and it's imminent. Your imminence. You know what else I'm sure is big is the gnashing of teeth, the the wailing, the bloody tears coming from MLS fans, knowing <laughs> that these referees may not be there opening day. That, I can I can hear it, I can feel it, I can taste it. That is the uh, part of this that I wanted to get to, Robert. The pro referees who no one likes is like, hey, we're not going to work this year. It seems like a weird tactic, but but uh, yeah, I do want to I want to talk about this a little bit here. We don't know. It doesn't actually say what exactly it is. They're just going over a new collective bargaining agreement. I don't think we have the actual problems or what is being discussed, but it is between pro referees, professional referees organization, which MLS uses. And that I've never actually heard of this other group that they're negotiating with, but it is PSRA professional soccer referees association. That would be their union. The union, of course, because it's a collective bargaining agreement. So referee is union or is whatever this, term that would be, yes. Is it in just the United States? I think so. I, I, I actually don't know Are the answer Are there international question. unions? <laughs> I don't think that could, Maybe that's not... Probably not, because usually, like, laws are... It's labor laws in yeah. a country, so... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what does a work stoppage is imminent actually mean? They're just not going to referee preseason? Well, they could just stand there and not call anything, but that wouldn't be that unusual for some of them. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I, that would mean that they would not work, and they would call in other referees to fill in. Which, again, kind of sounds appealing to a lot of people on the surface, but I um, think this has happened before. It has. I, I forget when, how long ago it was. It was it's been a decade or two. or I mean, it's been a while, but you got to think – Pro doesn't go out to find bad referees. I mean that. I mean, as much as we criticize some refereeing at some times, I mean, I usually try to be very fair about how we go about it. But they try to get the best referees, and you, they have levels. I mean, there's like there's different levels in pro. So like, if you're a certain level league, you might only afford the best, you know, the second best tier of referees and things like that. They do have promotion and relegation for referees. And so they are some of the best referees in this country. I'm not saying there aren't good referees that aren't in pro, but that's, I mean, it's always a easy thing to criticize. Well, actually, that's, that brings up a question. Is there another route for an American referee, like, to come up as a referee in this country not through pro? Like how you said there's not other, there, you're not saying that there's not other good referees out there. Where would they be? Who? Where are they refereeing? <laughs> well, they would, and I don't know the if there's actual organization names, but like there's state referee associations. So like the state, if you have high school and colleges within a state that you go to them for the referees. I mean, I okay, but so the, a guy, the best referee in that state group, is he not just waiting for the call up to to pro referees and make more money and do it professionally? Uh, they may not be waiting for it because they may not want to do that particular job. I mean, it, I would say 
yes, normal circumstances, you want to go play and ref at the highest level. However, maybe they don't want to do the travel. You know, they, yeah, yeah. I know referees who like, there's a really good referee that lives here in Lee Summit and his, I think is some of his kids referee and, you know, does a lot of the high school and colleges. Are you talking about Brian Martin by chance? Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> he said, no, that guy sucks. <laughs> I know, you know, Brian, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, and the guy I'm talking about actually works for MLS as a referee or has worked for for MLS is like a referee, not assessor, but the uh, liaison between like the team, you know, helping them out onto the field and things like that. But he's a really good referee in his own right. And there's been times when I've had referee questions and I like message him on Facebook and say, Hey, can you, what's your opinion? Okay. But where we were going with this is they've tried this before. They brought in other referees and it was somehow even worse. I think people will remember it probably better than it was, but yeah, there was, you know, mistakes were made. Of course, that was pre VAR, so. True. So, so it's the last uh, negotiation, well, it was it 2019? I don't know if that was then or not, but, but Thad, you do have a unique perspective because you're a photographer, you're down in the bowels of the stadium. How are referees treated? You know, their changing room, their food, their, are they treated well? Oh, I don't you ever get to, get to see go some of that, don't you? Uh, not too much. I mean, yeah. I, I, like it, for MLS, I've not really get too close to the referees because I mean they they are need to be insulated. Right. I do sometimes see them like walking out because they will go through the tunnels to to leave, and I don't ever interact with them. And I Robert mean, has a big, wonderful spread of food in the referees room. Is that what you're? Is that what you're? I'm just here? wondering, man. I'm just saying, hey, you know, what could they be negotiating besides salary? And you know, just give them some fans treat them <laughs> protein bars and squeezes and all that. They're good. What, what, what orange slices. Doing? Yeah, juice orange boxes. Slices. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there's like some money, some benefits. Maybe you know. I, yeah. Again, I haven't dug into what they're sure. asking for, but it, you know, it could be 401k plans. I don't know. But this is pretty far reaching, and we're talking about. Uh, NWSL, USL, Next Pro, you know, so it's pretty far reaching this impact. So, and it it's probably going to impact heavily because before when MLS did this, and when there was a work stoppage before MLS was the primary big league, and you know they had to call in uh, the ten referees maybe, you know, and that was probably it. But now if it affects MLS, NWSL, MLS Next Pro, USL, yeah. and multiple levels of USL, again, there's different levels of refs within pro. Like there's tier two refs. And again, I don't want to demean them, but they just haven't moved to tier one. So I know for a while, like NWSL was getting tier two refs and not the tier one refs. And again, that might not be the right term, but so that was part of their issue. And MLS was getting all the tier one wins. I think they've bumped up to where they're getting tier one wins when they can, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if they're all tier one, but I do think that's their goal is to have tier one in NWSL also. Bringing this back to the pro conversation here, the athletic article does say that the U S soccer federation will withdraw its financial support for the organization in the near future. Multiple sources briefed on that decision set on Friday and they gave the federation gave them $2 million in 2022 this is an aspect of this that I was not even familiar with. So this me reading the sentence sounds like pro is going to die if the U.S. Soccer Federation doesn't give them money. Is this a decision that has been made? Is, is pro coming to an end, Thad? I doubt it. Tell me what this means in this article. Man, not, not, not putting me on the spot there at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, everyone should go check this out. It's Tom Bogert and pa Pablo Maher, So Yeah, I, I don't think they will come to an end, but, I mean, U.S. Soccer has – uh, funded a lot of things in their time. Like the uh, NWSL was funded by U.S. Soccer. They were the primary funder for a number of years, along with uh, Canada put in some, Mexico put in some for a little while. But that was carried completely by U.S. Soccer for a long time. And then they finally, at one point, they said, you have to go fly, be on your own. And I think the teams wanted to. So I, I think this is maybe like the same thing with Pro, is they funded this to get it going. And now it needs to be its own thing, and that will cause the MLS and NWSL to have to pay more to get those reps. One of the quotes says how discouraged they are about negotiations, and then it says yeah. here that Pro offered an overall 3% pay increase to its referees, while the union had demanded an increase of up to 90%. So, yes, they wow. are far apart. 
Yeah, well, why not ask for a 90% right. raise <laughs> That's after, how you negotiate, right? <laughs> after a season of the entire league hating you? It sounds like a good time. Well, yeah, this is it's a very interesting uh, topic here. It's something to keep an eye on, and I do love that aspect of these guys thinking that they have some sway here when everyone hates them. It's just such a – I'm just kind of blown away by this situation. But like I said – Hate is a strong word. We've seen this before, and it didn't go well. well so if everyone hates us, we're going to get paid for it, damn and, it. And remember, the <laughs> NFL did this too. Everyone thought NFL referees were terrible. They went on a strike, and they brought in replacements, and the mistakes were even more ridiculous than – and because again people have to realize these are the top reps i mean pros not going out to find bad reps they are trying to have the best reps they can they may need to do better at training or other things but a lot of it is again i I try to defend them in this regard the amount of teams the amount of leagues the amount of games has exploded over the last decade and for a ref to become a from a mediocre ref to a good ref to a great ref, you need repetitions in high and, and faster scenarios and better national games. Um, well, I mean, you know, just at the best levels you can do, and it they don't have that opportunity until they show up. So it, yes, of course, there's going to be like issues there. Um, and I I'd have, I've probably talked about this at some point before, but I, I did photos at a large, huge youth tournament. Uh, a few times and one of the things at those tournaments was that referees were there and being assessed and so they would uh every game had would have multiple assessors there to help you know teach them and tell them what they did wrong and Mm -hmm. stuff like that and then referees when they weren't refing would come and stand in one corner and watch that and they would you know all be giving feedback and learning from these things and it was very informative because i was standing there like next to them well let me let me add on to that briefly i i've seen the backside of refereeing like that before I, w- I went through all of this myself. And that's something that can get lost with a lot of sports fans is the referees are like football mad people. Like they love the sport and they want to be the best at doing this. And so there are like very smart people who are dedicated, passionate, everything you would want. And uh, we it's easy to forget that when you see them make a bad call or when yes. we watch the VAR room and that, and that woman is like, nope, that's not a handball to me. Or <laughs> it's like I don't know. It's it's hard. It's very easy to forget all of that. But yes, there, there's a there's a whole world of soccer mad people in the refereeing game. Well, the VAR decisions may be explained by later in the article. They get paid significantly less than everybody else does. Ah, <laughs> so <there it> is. <laughs> they, they don't have to run. Yeah, they're just sitting in the <laughs> they booth. Don't have to run. They probably should get paid less. But, um, but, but uh, uh, you were talking about evaluating officials. That's something Nick Garcia does, correct? Yeah, yeah, or at least he has in the past. Yes, right. Yeah, um, but yeah, I was sure really there's other MLS players, former players. Oh yes. do it. yeah, yeah. I, I've seen a number of them, and um, I was actually really impressed when I was going back to that youth tournament. I was very impressed with what the referees were doing and how they were approaching it. Uh, I, the, one of the funniest things was though a, a ref like made a really tough call and got it right, and these other refs standing over to the side went yeah, and then the assessor turned around and like cannot do that (laughs) they were happy for the ref getting the right call but they were like you but they immediately got chastised for showing some support for the other ref like nick garcia reference there that was good i love i love doing a show with these two guys who have been in in this kansas city soccer community like nearly as long as i've been alive and every now and then they'll just throw out a name like that it's to happen twice i don't remember the first name you did it's maybe a local guy that he asked you about but I love when they'll just say a name. It's like, oh, I kind of I recognize yeah. that name. I like halfway know who we're talking about. But I'm just pointing out the two I'm sitting in between here have immense knowledge of the sport in this city. And that is why I have them on here and people should be listening. <laughs> uh, I appreciate well, thanks, that, Cody. Cody. I appreciate that. And he, was, he mentioned a ref that uh, he, the ref that he mentioned, that Robert mentioned was, because uh, I keep pointing at him, like you can't see that dumb. <laughs> um, but... He mentioned Brian Martin, who's a local ref, who's refed high school, college, uh, MASL. And I don't know if he's refed any USL levels, but I know he's refed at least at that high of a level. And he's been a pretty good ref, although some may disagree with that. Well, I didn't necessarily ask for more information about that guy <laughs> that I didn't know. I was just, I'm just saying you guys have this immense knowledge and you can it, come acro- it comes across in these podcasts. So I thank you for that. Decades of knowledge of local soccer. Hey, you know, it's it's like the once a year that Cody does actually acknowledge and respect <laughs> the old people on the pod. 
<laughs> let's let's have a toast afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Speaking of local soccer, let's talk about Sporting Kansas City. Even though there is nothing to talk about for Sporting Kansas Ugh. City. <laughs> <laughs> Things are happening around MLS. Luis Suarez to Miami. Dax just signed with Atlanta. And we're just waiting, Thad. You didn't so. mention the Man City man? No, I didn't. <laughs> man you City reject. To. No. <laughs> yeah, Zach Steffen to uh, Colorado. Colorado. I didn't. I Colorado. chickened out there at the end. Colorado got two big players recently, didn't they? They got somebody else. They did. I can't remember the other See, one. Other is. teams are doing things and sporting Kansas City is not. Uh, are you Shield winner, FC Cincinnati, got a big center back signing? Miles Just the Shield winner? Oh, okay, there you go. I wanted I wanted Thad to say it. I thought he didn't. Oh, apologies. Just trying to help. <laughs> so Thad, are you getting worried that a big signing is not gonna be here for the start of preseason? I don't think a big signing will be here for the start of preseason. I'm we not have, worried. I don't think they will be. What do we want? Less than a week? One week? Yeah, we're about a week away. Yep. About one week until pitchers and catchers report or something. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> so, Thad, no inside info, no rumors to report here. I know there's something happening with sporting, but I was told it was not team related. So, the hell does that mean? Not players, not coaches, not... Ash Wallace re-signed as a coach. Uh, it could be that, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> Robert, are you getting worried? Uh, worried? No. I mean, you know, we've got some weaknesses that we need to push up. And, and Peter's big thing was we need to elevate the bottom of the roster. And I think some of the acquisitions yeah. that we've done ha- have done that. And maybe some of the people we've jettisoned have done that too. But, uh, you know, there's no rush. You want to get the decision right. And that's what Peter's going to do. I, I would not be shocked if we did not see a, a big signing until the summer window. Which is unfortunate. You make a big signing, you want them there for the full preseason. You do. You do. But And that's traditionally summer signings for sporting have been mixed results, usually yeah. uh, not great. And then the next year they, they break out. But, I mean, there have been exceptions. Um but yeah, it was kind of funny, like, you know, like Google photos like pops up and like, you know, hey, this is your memory from a year ago. And like a year ago, I think yesterday was the sign, the uh, pneumonia Redoya being introduced. Oh, OK. No, Sad Cody hates it when we kind of play down and play, you know, the thinking it, you know, through thing. He would rather us say, yeah, this is plenty of reason for fans to rebel and be angry <laughs> that there's been no signing this offseason. They haven't <laughs> made a center back signing to increase that. I mean, they lost Gotti. They haven't released him. What are they doing? See, thank what you. What is going on? That is podcast content right there. And it's not just that. It's we we People don't think we're negative enough. We need to portray a frustrated fan as much as the fans are frustrated. And that was not... You weren't entirely being crazy there. No, I no, think not at all. It's it's fair. Like at this moment, yeah, they have not. We we lost Gotti Kinda. We have an open DP slot. It is fair to be like, hey, what the hell? But I think most people understand they're not just sitting on their hands. Like and you know, Alan Pleto didn't score in the playoffs, so you know, he only scored one goal after signing the contract, mm-hmm. and that was a missed PK that he followed up. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Why are we Why are we doing this? No, we won't. I want Polito. We we need him to have. And, a the, good and year. then the most creative guy down the stretch was Gotti Kenda, and, and you he's know, really successful. Logan and, and Logan well. and is out till at least middle of the year. I mean, yeah, there's plenty of things to be oh pissed off God. about and negative about if you really want to go down that route, Cody. But this is a new year. <laughs> wow, everything's bright and beautiful right now. Not yes. lie. you laid it all out there for me. I did get a little I upset. Filleted it right open there, man. <laughs> there's like little fish bones sticking out now. Well, what the hell, <laughs> Peter? Sign someone. I'm I'm starting to panic here. <laughs> <laughs> On the let's see. So I mean, I we always try, we try to like somewhat be balanced here. We do want to be critical where it's necessary. I yes, they they need to have somebody else. We've talked about like we want another midfielder, maybe a winger. Uh, um, Vargas is at least another winger who has speed, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I don't know how he's if he's going to make that jump to MLS or how fast he will make that jump. But he has at least speed. You have still have Willie Gata, who you know missed a, 
didn't play a lot of last year and so he can maybe do some other things there's there's some options there but yes we would like to have more ad- depth we'd like to have more players that they can play but the base the base 11 is not bad well let's get down to brass tacks here Cody and I'll address this to yes you. love it when are you tired down. of having Renos Johnnys and Kyrie Shelton as their backup wingers are they good enough I guess I have Janis hasn't been around long enough for me to get tired of him. It's and only he's kinda, year three. He's kind of fun right? to watch. <laughs> well, so two two years and he never plays. So uh, I think he's kind of fun to watch. You never know what's gonna happen. Not I don't necessarily think something nothing great productive, is productive, apparently. <laughs> yeah, nothing great I don't think is gonna happen, but uh yeah. The He's uh, Johan Krause with a smile. A winger. <laughs> Yeah, but we haven't had that Galazzo from him yet, though. So I'm waiting. That's true. <laughs> um, Did I just tell you throw you off there? Yeah, you got me. any Johan Quase reference? I just <laughs> instantly get teleported. All right, so I'm just trying to stall to give you time to think of what your what well, what were what was the Kyrie Shelton Marine was Johnny says backup wingers. Yeah, I have said winger is one of my top wish lists this year. Vargas is cool. He could end up, you know, he could end up being great, but wildly inexperienced. And yeah, we need we need someone to score some goals this year, right now, and give Johnny a rest. And I don't think the draft picks are going to be it. No, no. I do think the first round draft pick will probably has a good chance of signing with Sporting. Is that so? That's a good point. Are we at that point in the draft where it's like? You draft someone, it is always a project, a prospect. We don't, no one in any draft pool we think is just going to yeah, come in. If it's an attacking play. player, for sure. A defender, he could be some good depth. But. I, I wouldn't even say even with attacking players. I'm just going to say it becomes further, fewer and further between for those players because the, the, the draft becomes more sparse the longer academies go. And that's not just MLS academies, that's USL championship academies because they're they're bringing in players that are good and preventing them from going, not say preventing them, but giving them opportunities that uh, doesn't include college. So they're, those players are just going to become fewer and further between. However, there are still players coming out of the draft that make impacts pretty quick. I mean, I know there's been a couple of them, and even attacking players, just they're not that a lot. But I do expect the the keeper that they drafted, I can't even think of his name right now, he has a, he, I say he stands a pretty decent chance of signing with Sporting. And I would say the other two probably go to SKC two. Now we live to derail Cody's plan that he lays out for us. But um, you know, when I saw the camp for the national team, you know, January camp, it's usually a cupcake camp. But how many years has it been since a sporting player has been in that camp? And yet I find that disappointing. Too long. Too Couple long. years. Yeah. I mean, Busio. Right. That well, Busio has That's not been here. Ago. Busio has been gone for like four years now, right? God, is time has it been that is time long? moving that 20, strangely since the twenty twenty one? I think. Oh, yeah, so okay, but yeah, when I saw that, I was like, you know, that's disappointing. We, we we should have players of quality enough to be on that roster, and according to obviously the coaches at the national team, we do not. Jake Davis is an argument, but uh, it's got to be more, right? Yeah, yeah, and there's there's a lot of uh, depth in those uh, outside back positions, and he's still not established there you know sure, because agreed. of how long he's played there yeah but he was uh on the cusp of being called up for various different right as we talked about you know before, yeah. national team youth national teams and u23s and stuff like that last year so he's not maybe that far off of it but i mean if i again if i was a coach calling in these players i you're calling in players that you want to take a look at for, for oh, this yeah. particular camp it's right. It's more like, okay, these are guys that, you know, they're in MLS, they're not overseas, and it, maybe even, uh, you never know, cause sometimes like sporting will say, we would rather you not call them in, because that's why they did this way, did, Jake didn't go to the Pan Am games, sporting said no, but with the national team, you usually won't say no, uh, although I guess a couple of uh, players in Europe were, they were told no, they couldn't have them for this camp, because it's not in the window. Sure. So yes, you really did disrail disrail me there. Uh, derail. Derail. <laughs> we are going to talk about Camp Cupcake here in a little bit, and yes, there is a St. Louis player on there, um, and it is not good that we don't see Sporting Kansas City players on there anymore. 
Yeah, that's in segment three. We're supposed to talk about Camp Cup. Yes, well, and I don't know why you. It's sporting related. Why I didn't as bring well. it up. It was me, but it's sporting related as yes, well. Yes, the bringing it up is fine. Thad going into a, a into a long <laughs> thing about it is what got me there. But no, we, we, there's still other uh, other things we can talk about from that. But let's take a quick break right here, and then I have one more thing on the uh, sporting Kansas City roster. All right, we're back. Thad, you mentioned something very briefly there about Peter's urge to raise the quality of the bottom of the roster. I think Robert mentioned it, but yeah, I'll go with that. One of you mentioned that. Thank you. Um, is that in response to the beginning of last season? Oh, hell yes. It better be. Well, so I just, I would like to point that out because people talk about Peter being too rigid and maybe not wanting, like he knows everything. He doesn't want to change something, but I, uh, that seems like a, a reasonable response. If you didn't like the way the first 10 games went, isn't this exactly what you would want the coach to do? This seems like what he should be doing. You know, I think about random things while I'm driving. This is one of the things I was thinking about the other day. You know, during, while that was going on, he wasn't going to throw his guys under the bus. Right. You know, he was going to say, hey, we need, we got players that are coming back, you know, blah, blah, blah. It was but, them, though. But this is a, a, an admission in some ways that, yeah, I need to do a better job at the bottom of the roster so that doesn't happen again. Yeah. For sure. So hopefully that's what's going to happen. I think the acquisitions we've gotten so far, I mean, help with that. But there needs to be more. There does. And I think that they're, I mean, they're working on it. It's just, yeah, like you said, Peter's not going to throw the players under the bus, typically. If, if he does throw a player under the bus, it's to send a huge message. Right. I mean, it's because they're it's because they're not going to be on the team on by <laughs> Tuesday is what, uh, often what that means. Uh, there's that aspect too, <laughs> yes. Whether but, that's Tuesday in December or whenever, right? <laughs> but he has uh, at times like very openly criticized some players that needed to step up, and that he sent that message. Sometimes I'm he, sure he sent it, but he sent it, but he sent it through the the press in order to uh, make sure that it was known. Did it to Beesler at one point? Yes, and who did eventually earn his. Earn that starting job back. Yeah. Because uh, I, I don't think he was that far off of it, but I think he just needed to, to refocus a little Kick bit. Kick in the ass. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think everybody does at some point, right? But it he'll do that. So anyway. that is that is really good to see that because the bottom of the roster is what uh, makes me roll my eyes at not just this team, but the rest of MLS. And I do think sporting was behind the times there. I think a stronger bottom of the roster would have helped a little bit in that stretch, but I, man, looking back, it, it was on the players. Shallowy didn't do anything. Johnny was doing everything he could. Agata couldn't score a goal for the life of him. Like it was just, it was on the players. Like it was guys that we know are good that just, that stopped. It's uh, obviously it was on everybody a little bit, but if I'm pointing the finger, it was players were not stepping up. And I mean, we had Radoya out hurt. We had Johnny out hurt. We know Gata actually had a stress fracture for a lot of that time. So it wasn't playing at his best. Right. There was a lot of guys who were, had various different things going on and, you know, and then your two best players out that we already knew was happening and then lack of confidence, you know, it just generated it, it, it started and built and it kept growing and it wasn't until they went dancing around a fire pit that it got. Yeah. Better. But, but guys, we're veering toward giving them excuses. Okay. There's no excuse for what happened at the beginning of the season. Let's get that right. Yeah. It's not an excuse. It's just describing yeah. what happened. Yeah. But I'm also going to throw in part of the, now that I said that, you know, the Courtney Ford, he did his, what, ACL yeah. near the end of preseason. So they yeah. had to emergency fill in the center back position. So Who yeah. ended up as our best center back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can turn the page on that conversation. The schedule has come out. I have been waiting a decade plus for my fabled Pacific Northwest. Wednesday, Sunday road trip where we play in Portland on a Wednesday and Seattle on Sunday or Vancouver on Sunday and Seattle on Wednesday. I, I wanted what between those three teams, I'm looking for a Wednesday, Sunday trip and it did not happen again this year. It was close. They're in San Jose on a Sunday. And then I think Portland on a Wednesday, not quite what I was looking for. I want to go to the PN PNW to see that world up there. I've never been. Um, but I don't know. What do, you, what do you guys think of the schedule so far? We got the three games against St. Louis. This year we get the two at home. A little upper hand on that one. And hopefully see them in the playoffs again. Any, <laughs> any specific game? I hope game? they don't make the playoffs. Yeah, Come on, no, man. <laughs> no. Hopefully we don't. 
<laughs> uh, any specific games stand out besides Miami that Lionel Messi might not even play? Uh, yeah. Too bad you can't buy a single game ticket for that. I know. <laughs> I was, I don't know. I I know why. I mean, I do get why. Because okay, they're well, trying to, they're, because they're holding those out away, trying to hope that more people will get season tickets as an opportunity to get that game. It's, it's perfect sense. It makes good marketing. Why put it out there and let people not get season tickets? Makes sense to me. Yeah. I still don't think he's going to play, though. They're going to advance in the Champions Cup. He's going to play that Sunday or that Wednesday, and then he's not going to play against us. It might be true, but do you think every one of those other kind of, like, Big guys like Suarez. And no, Suarez. Abba. There was a quote from Suarez. I think I said it on the show a couple weeks ago where he was like, just talking about it, the immense pain he is in on a daily basis, that he has to take all these pills and supplements to just get up and walk. And then like a week later, he signs with Miami. Like, oh, he's going to be so good. So, no, I don't know. Oh, hey, he, he was good last season, too. He uh, Yeah, he's a great player and a shithead. But... <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't bit anybody lately <laughs> that we the, know of, and that's the best thing you can say about him. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I don't know if he's a bad person. I don't actually. I mean, I don't usually follow that stuff too much, but I don't know. But he hasn't bit anybody for a long time. <laughs> no, but going okay. back to Cody's original I'll idea, I'll give him that. <laughs> I mean, we, but we started talking about pain. I was like, was it dental issues? Well, like, yeah, I'm. I'm just saying, I don't. I don't see him playing every game, so we may very well see a a second team there for them. But where I was going with this <laughs> was Stacy on KCSoccerJournal.com uh, wrote out an article for five road trips that one might take so you can start planning early. Uh, she kind of focused on all the all of our regional ones. That's a easier ones to make. Stacy wasn't looking for a cross-country road trip to Seattle or anything, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. Do you, are you guys expecting yourself to go on, on any of these specific ones? Or I guess you guys will go back to St. Louis again this You'll year. You'll never catch me in Houston. I'm sorry. No, I, there's nothing about going to a Houston Dynamo game <laughs> that sounds appealing to me. Except just being the louder fan <laughs> fan group in the stadium. <laughs> I mean, so yeah, that would be a, a, a also an interesting road trip is to get a Houston, Austin, Dallas, you know, combo also. Because yeah. I mean, it would be yeah, one. Yeah. You know, I mean, you talk about the Pacific Northwest, but I mean, you, yeah, but then you're still in Texas. one out of three is not bad. Austin, <laughs> the, the, I'd be up for that. <laughs> the source of this trip that I want is to see that region of our country and Canada. You you can visit without it being soccer I, games. Yeah, Cody, you're not getting any younger, man. I done been I mean, to Texas. On. I don't need to see Texas <laughs> anymore. I'm. I'm willing to go back to both, but I mean, I'd, honestly, I'd probably rather go back to Texas because I had more fun there. I'm going to really geek out here and say, you know, I'd love a Columbus, Cincinnati uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame trip. That would be fun. You would. Yes, I would. That's the only reason to go to Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> only good the, thing to come out of Ohio is the interstate. The away St. Louis game is on September 28th, if you would like to start planning now. I barely plan next weekend. Yeah, I know. Probably be a lottery again, and, you know, I got one out of two last season, so not bad. Oh, well, yeah, I forgot they were doing it like that. Could you get credentials? Yeah, but then I can't be with my girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, I've already claimed in the, the journal Slack group dibs on the recap for the Miami game. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> because Is that legit, Thad? Because Wait a minute, he's an editor, so I guess it is. I don't know. Hey, you have that power. You can we, call. We, that's how we do this. Everything around here operates on dibs, and I just called it really early. <laughs> yes, you did. The thinking there is, if Messi plays, we're gonna have all these local news, local whoever coming out that we never see. It's gonna be a crowded press box, and I don't want the journal to get squeezed out. So we might only have if we only have one person in the press box. I've made sure it will be me. Okay, now, Thad, did you still have season tickets? Yes. Okay, so you and I, are we the only ones that have season tickets that are in David. press? David. Not anymore. Yeah, he was he was dropping them. Yep. Not so a good fan. We have, we, I mean, I haven't. So I'll be there one way or another, is what I'm saying. Well, I'll be on the field, most likely. I mean, I'm, right, right. I'm, yeah. I'm going to get squeezed out down there. Oh, no, of course not. Plus, I'm. Like been old enough, I at least have some slight, tiny bit of seniority in oh, order to, to to be able to get down there. I wouldn't it even talk be, about that. Better be more than slight seniority. But 
I don't, I mean, I'm not trying to like, you know, big time it or something. I'm just saying I should be able to get on the field to shoot. Uh, I would imagine we'll have at least one seat up there. I don't know how many people will show up. And especially if Messi's not going to be there, if it's really in doubt, they may not even be that many. And if it's local yeah. people, you know, they, they always show up for like one big thing, like a media game and then don't show up hardly ever again. So, but back to the original idea of, you know, the schedule, I think, and maybe I'm wrong, guys, but I feel rejuvenated. You know, the fan base is rejuvenated a bit by Sporting's come back this season. We've got the local rivalry. We've got, you know, Messi in the league. As much as people hate to talk about it, it's true. Bringing, you know, some other, other players with him. So I think the atmosphere is going to be overall better than it's been in, in years. Hope so. Yeah. Really hope so because yeah. it got bad there for a while. That's one of Thad's wishes. And if you look on the kcsoccerjournal.com, Mike wrote a 2024 wishes article. He does a yearly one. Yearly. This year's edition leads off with number one as silverware. Is that optimistic, Robert? Well, are we going to be in the Open Cup or not? <laughs> That's the first question. I know. I wanted to talk about that. I had that on the rundown at some point, but we just don't have any new information since we last talked about it. There really hasn't been any progress. I, I My understanding is we'll be in the Open Cup. I that's, mean, that's that is what I've been thinking as of late. Like because nothing else has come about, I, I think MLS is going to cave and yeah. we're going to do it the same. And if MLS teams don't care about it, they can put out a, a a crappy team and as they always have, you know, a lot do. And you know, there it's it's always weird. Like some teams will go out strong for it and some won't, and a lot will depend on where they're where, where they feel they're at in their season and stuff like that. But I guess the one thing new that did come out was. Uh, U.S. Soccer like released the schedule for the Open Cup, and seemingly it is no different on the number of teams involved and anything like that. So it it is still set the schedule without teams um, that would fit in MLS teams normally. So yeah, that is where I'm leaning at the moment. So if we're in the Open Cup, I, I'd say it's slightly optimistic, but not as so if we're not in the Open Cup, because then we only have two trophies that we can compete for. Right. And uh, Mike made the point in his article that the drought could be, if we don't get one this year, the longest drought in club's history, tie for it anyway, right. if we don't have silverware this year. So, Wow. And in some fairness, silverware gets harder and harder every oh, yeah. year with more teams coming for into sure. the league. For of course, sure. they keep adding new tournaments. So, I mean, it does the League's <laughs> Cup wouldn't count. Does that count as a yeah, silver? Yeah, of course it does. Messi made it relevant, remember? He and made you, it relevant for you, one year. And you get in the Champions Cup, so. Oh, I'm still not used to calling it Cup. What is the value in changing it? Why? What was the reason for changing it from Champions League? I don't know, man, because I kind of like, I, I, I will, I'm going to tell myself, I was actually making fun of somebody else calling it Champions Cup, and then I was rudely informed that it is called Champions Cup now. It is Cup actually now. Like, called that now. I was like, yeah, but the only reason they know it's because they're newbies. I well, hope. I know that they... It's not a trademark thing, I assume. They, like, tweaked the format. Like, more teams were involved, and when yeah. clubs came in is a little different, but I don't, I don't understand this. I don't know why they changed it, but it maybe it is to denote it from other Champions Leagues, you know? Because, I mean, if you say Champions League in this country, even most people will think, you know, Europe... I yeah. liked that consistency. Uh, it, this That was their Champions League. This is our Champions League. So now you say Champions Cup to someone over there, then it's like, well, what is that? Is that different from Champions League? I really or wish this was on video because you're making great facial expressions. <laughs> <laughs> I talk with my hands, too. I yeah, know. That's all right. Okay, what else do we have on wishes here? Instead of reading his, Thad, what is a wish that you have? Broad one. Be competitive from the start for all the teams. I, I don't, just don't want to be covering a bad, bad, bad team. That Com sucks. Comets are on a good start for that at the moment. They are. They're top of the division, only one loss. Uh, one of Mike's here is a pretty low bar on fill the third DP slot. Easy wish there. And if they don't fill that one, then I think we're going to have a problem. I could, again, I could see it happening in the middle of the year. Because, again, you got to think about finances, too, where they're actually at in the salary cap. Uh, yes, the DP money over top, the salary cap, the, the max charge in the salary budget is covered by owners, but you still have to have that salary budget and figure out what you're going to do with it and, and make sure that it's worthwhile. So I would be happy that next week they announce a DP, but I would also not be surprised if it wasn't for a while. 
Mike also wants a top four finish. I think that's a reasonable wish. It's a reasonable wish. In a lot of years, we thought it would be a cinch, and it most of the time it should have been a cinch. Yeah, and in recent years, it would have been like fans would be mad if we didn't. You know, sometimes hitting bottom is a good reset for fan expectations because sometimes it, when you're at the top every year, you have unreasonable expectations on how everything's going to go. He does remind people here. I know we did a good job of reminding people this at the end of that season, but uh, the 1.71 points per game over 24 games of the season, just getting rid of the first 10. So, you know, over half of the season, they were at 1.71 points per game, which would have been first in the West and third in MLS. So just think how bad they were that first 10 games, though. Just I know, even, even mediocre, just don't be terrible. And they would have been right up there. Just two wins out of that, and then you're talking about, you're talking about middle of the pack in but the But then playoffs. we wouldn't have gotten... The, the storyline. We wouldn't have gotten the St. Louis win, which, man, what a season that was. <laughs> <laughs> Made it all worth it. <laughs> all right, well, not that Cody's games. asked me, but I'll throw out a wish Give there. A wish, Robert. It's off of Mike's uh, number 10, Sporting KC2, built on 2023 season, make playoffs again. You know, that's great. I'd love for that to happen, too. But I really would like to see a breakout player. I mean, Jake last year improved, took that spot great. Whether it's him getting to the next level or actually getting some production from our academy or a, a strong contributor at the first team side is, is one, of his, one of my wishes for sure. How about Vargas? Can Vargas come in and just show, like, be a prodigy for a season and we can sell him for $10 million and get back on track? Sure. And how old is Natty Clark now? Long been rumored to be the, the next coming in many ways. Oh, not probably about 19. Oh, is that what he 18? is? That is younger yeah. than I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, because he would have been just going off to college, I think. Um, so he's right in that age range. And sorry, I don't, I don't remember people's birthdays. That was just an example, head, not to put pressure in Natty, um, which you know, of course, he would yeah. feel from me. But you know. yeah, yeah, <laughs> like he knows who you are, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see how he develops. I mean, he's you know just signed the first contract with right. the first real pro contract, so he's committed to playing soccer. And, and I do, I remember like last year we were talking about, you know, what's some wild speculation kind of thing you were predicting. And I think I threw out that some guy's just going to come out of nowhere and, you know, play as homegrown player in place. I wasn't expected it to be Jake. Yeah. But it was. I was at least I was part Different of the position is probably why. I mean, that's part yeah. of it. This article from Mike is not just Sporting Kansas City. He's got Copa America wishes on there. Um, and another one I like is Zach Regat makes U.S. football team, U.S. qualify futsal team, uh, U.S. qualifies and has a good showing at the Futsal World Cup. Just a reminder, we do have Zach Regat. He's a wonderful player, really fun to watch, in an, not just in the realm of indoor soccer. He is so much fun to watch, great player, and uh, is looking like he's going to go play at the Futsal World Cup this year, Thad. Yeah, he's he's a, one, a member of the futsal team, and just, he's so talented, and... Uh, I'm always a little amazed that he's still actually playing in MASL because he's... Dude, uh, he's scoring bangers. Crazy volleys, yeah. chips, and, like, dude, he is so good. And because he, he's uh, got three hat tricks already this year. On a bad night, he scores a goal. Like, the three games ago, he got a goal against St. Louis. And he was like, oh, man, terrible game. And then, you know, next night he goes... the Two nights later, they go play in St. Louis, and he scores three goals. So he's... That's that's his that's his standard. It's like two to three goals at least. How tall is he? Is he short? No, he's not short. Okay, he's again. I don't know exactly how tall, but he's like old. five eleven. Yeah, probably in that range. Yeah, shorter than me. Just saying. Yeah, <laughs> more talented, better point. looking. I was a small guy. I was a short guy my entire life, and then I had a growth spurt. At the six of, eight now. Cody. The end of high school. So I like I like uh, knowing I'm taller than people. Okay. Any other wishes? Was there any others in there you needed to talk about? Like, you know? Oh, as he goes on, he he goes up to 11 and 12, and it's just wishing for a good showing in the Copa America for the U.S. national team and Kansas City. Good showing. No, I would like to be a little more specific there. Mike, give me some good content. To give us a harder take there. Well, 60,000 people show up at <laughs> right, our head. Yeah, for... hard, hard numbers on these, Mike, please. Um. I hope somebody, you know, I hope people show up to Children's Mercy Park for the non-U.S. game. Yeah. I'll be there. 
And I know you, you know, mentioned the current return to the playoffs, but, you know, hope they open their stadium well, hope everything goes well, because there's still questions about parking and things like that, but hopefully that's ironed out quickly. But hopefully that they do well. There's lots of things we can wish for. And hopefully maybe even some changes within KC Soccer Journal. If we're looking for wishes for 2024, we just had our meeting. We're looking to do things a lot more mm. seriously, more comprehensively. Continue to improve our coverage in various different ways. Yeah. And actually, on that note, we are wanting people to, anyone that wants to contribute in any form of content, video editors, videographers, if you're, yeah, I mean, we need a videographer. And instantly, if someone came to do this, they would likely be able to get a press credential to be on the field and help with some of that, at least for the 15 minutes, right? Yes, perhaps. So yeah, th- I don't know. It's just, this is a very good way. We, we're, we've established the alley pipeline, Thad. You come here, you get experience, fun experience, and then you get a job with the team or CBS or whoever it is, and you, go, and you turn pro. And we want to do that for not just what Allie's doing, not just journalists who Steinleggy, they, a bunch of people have come to do this as a journalist yes. and use it as a stepping stone. So we want to do this for all different things. You know a high school kid with a video camera and he wants to be making content? Let us know. And somebody who's uh, serious about it, not just wanting to, to get access and try to get an autograph like some photographer did last year. Yeah. Yeah, Thad let somebody in. We do in. have to vet. I did not let them in. <laughs> we do have to vet yeah. these people. Yes, we, we let one get through the cracks there and gave a credential. They let somebody get through the cracks. Yeah. I did not. Yeah. And I was a little pissed about that. So, Cody, are you teasing that we will hear more specifics regarding the future of Casey Soccer Journal in the uh, in, uh, well, near future? That is communicating with our army of contributors. We're seeing what everyone wants to do, what everyone would like to do, what they can do. I'm uh, through a couple of them so far. Uh, we still have a lot of people to talk to. But that's, I think that we have a lot of people and we just got to get them directed and uh, find where everybody wants to contribute the most. Well, I mean, think about it, guys. I mean, let's just be straightforward here. We're in Kansas City. We've got an indoor team that's strong. We've got a women's team that's building the first women's stadium in the, in the whole world. We've got a sporting Kansas City team that's been here for years and won many trophies. We've got Copa America coming this summer. We've got World Cup coming in 2026. Where else would you rather be? Heck yeah. Everything's up to date in Kansas City. Well, and we were, for years, we were just, we were part of SB Nation. Now we're kind of on our own. We have more that we can do, more freedom, more control over how we do this. And yeah, this is a good brand. People know and understand this brand. Thad has a lot of trust in the soccer community. We got a lot of support when we made this change from SB Nation. And we want to cultivate that. We want to grow the brand. We want to be more professional, be better, have more content. Yeah. And, and you, you say more professional. I, I totally agree. I, I, I don't want to diminish how professional we have been, but yes, yeah, so we wanted to continue to become like a, the trusted source for soccer knowledge, not only in Kansas city, but further out, maybe even beyond. Okay. To infinity and beyond. New year, new things. That's not our slogan, right? No. <laughs> That's just riffing new slogans for us here. No, I'm just copying Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> but yeah, but if you know people who want to contribute in any way, shape, or form, or and again, use us as a stepping stone. We are willing to be a stepping stone and help you get to someplace else. Uh, I mean, I, I for me, I'm I'm here. I'm not going anywhere else. They're, I'm too old to like do something else. No, and if not be. a stepping stone, that's not true. Then you make some lifelong mm-hmm. friends. That is now one of my oldest friends. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean like long. You're just literally one of my oldest aged friends. Yes, I'm just old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, I accept that, man. I'm, I, I never expected to get this old, but that's fine. All right. Last segment. We'll start to wrap things up here. Uh, these two kind of already ruined the majority of the Camp Cupcake. This is what we do. <laughs> conversation. But Burhalter did call in a list. There is just 
This is one thing I thought was interesting. Don't they normally play at least two friendlies? Yeah, usually. Yeah. So this year it's just one. They're playing Slovenia on January 20th. Uh, and it is, man, I already forgot where. Is it San Antonio this year that they? Yes. I think it is San yes, it Antonio is. Camp Cupcake. No sporting Kansas City players on the roster. I always use this as kind of a measuring stick for how I'm going to watch MLS the, that season, that coming season, because there's some names on there that I wouldn't have known before or that's at least quality MLS players on the January list. Um, like I said, there are some notable names here. St. Louis City also got one, that Aziel Jackson, he's a midfielder. There are also ones on here that kind of confuse me. Shaq Moore is on there. He's just kind of, that's just... Kind of a holdover. Yeah, uh, it seems like he's gotten his shot with the national team and uh, didn't really transpire there. some veteran, you know, yeah. presence here. <laughs> that's, that is exactly what that is. He's a 27-year-old at this point. Like, it's... And, he, I mean, he's all right. Again, it doesn't hurt to, like, pull in those guys right. and keep them in tune because, right. you know, if you like, lose two guys to injury, he's, right. he might be your third or fourth on the depth chart. So. Well, and, and the veteran aspect there, it's it's... You got to have some guys in this camp that can show these guys that have never been there what a player looks like, how to act, and things like that. Right. So, uh, Miles Robinson is in there. James Sands, Timothy Tillman. So, there, there, Cade Cowell. There, there's a lot of big names in there that we that we know names to keep an eye on around the league. Um, but I did think that was uh, I thought that was very weird. There's only one one friendly this year against Slovenia. So. No. It is definitely a camp cupcake this is, year. Is San Antonio, Texas City, you'd be interested in visiting? Sure, yeah. I've never been there. Yeah. yeah. It was uh I was actually thinking about going down there. I was talking to my wife about going because she does have some friends in Houston and Dallas and like you could we could go down and maybe stay with them. I could go to the game and come back, but the timing just didn't work out. I was really just talking shit. I would like to go to Austin. I haven't been to Austin actually. Yeah, that's my target. That's kind of an it's, oasis in that in that <laughs> state. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been to Austin, but I uh, took several business trips down there, and I enjoyed it a lot. Music. Yeah, and some really, really high urinals. <laughs> Tall urinals <laughs> in Austin, huh? Um, I, Is this just one place? You just didn't like this bar you went to, or you're saying in all of Austin... They're just taller humans, and the urinals are taller. Well, I think they are taller on average, but uh, there was – it was one of the famous bars where like, they had Austin City Limits music. I mean, the, the, it, you, Robert knows what I'm talking about from the old days. They would, there was a show on PBS, Austin City Limits, that would bring in different acts. But anyway, it was like a bar that was famous for having that stuff, and I went there, had to go there because it was a thing. Or was it just bad barbecue that just weighed you down, made you shorter? Is that what it was? No, 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 no I, I didn't <laughs> eat a ton of their barbecue. I ate a ton of Tex-Mex. But yeah, the, I I definitely had to like aim up. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna have to Google this. Like I don't under I've never thought about this before. Is there a standard national height of a urinal that it, that there needs to be? Because it seems like there should be. What kind of results are you gonna get if you Google urinal <laughs> height? <laughs> This is, I wouldn't this just click a, on all of those links. I'm just, just saying. Just keep, keep it on incognito, man. <laughs> this is just a glimpse into the way my mind works. It's torture like that sometimes, if I'm being honest. I can't hear something like that. Just drop it. Like, why would Austin have higher urinals? That makes no I, sense. I, I'm not saying it was all of Austin, but it was definitely that place. My existence is torture. Uh, we already talked about the Comets a little bit. Six and one already? No. What, who else besides? They are oh, seven and one. Seven and one. They won last, last night. night. Apologies. That's right. Who else? What else is going on besides... Riga just running a train on the league. Uh, yeah, he's. I mean, everybody's been playing pretty well. Uh, Leo Gibson, the Leo, the legend, the former player he, coach. He was the player coach for three or four years, and now he's just back to being the player. I shouldn't say just back, but he's kind of uh, struggled a little bit this year. But he got off the Schneid. You know that com. You know that reference, right? I mentioned shake that. Shake my head. Yes. Um, but he got a couple goals last night, played a really good game. So that was really good to see when he when he scored the first goal, man. Like every all the team just was so happy for him. I mean, they're happy for a goal, but they were just it was different than just a regular goal celebration. Club legend for sure. How long has he been here with this team? Uh, since the very start of the this version of the comments. Yeah. Isn't he like fifty five? He is forty <laughs> forty. He is exactly forty years old. I'd say the oldest active athlete in uh, Kansas City. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. 
There's no pitcher on the Royals that's older than Well, that. I haven't looked lately, but like <laughs> last year I did look and Yeah, they're new signy. No. I don't know. Um seems like the Royals would have a 42-year-old pitcher in the bullpen or something. Oh, and and they might, but I'm just going <laughs> off of last year I looked and there was like the three oldest players in Kansas City. Uh one was Leo, one was uh like the backup quarterback for Oh. I can't think of what his name was. Oh, um yeah, yeah, he was very old. Um, and then Brad, uh, Brad Henney. Yeah, there we go. Took me a second. And then there was somebody else, like you know, Roger was getting up there. Uh, somebody on the current was getting up there. You don't need to do. Knows. I'm trying to get this show younger. You guys are out here reminiscing about old old times and all this. We're trying to make the show younger. We're trying to be relevant here and stay up to date with the content game in the 2024. Grab the Gen Zs. Yeah, that's not my forte there. <laughs> uh, okay, current. Kansas City Current has uh, made a, new, a kind of a, an exciting new signing, Thad. Yeah, uh, Tim Wachawan. Oh, man. <laughs> yes. All right, I put Tim my phone Wachawinga. next to Cody. I did not. I put my phone next to Cody so he could see the proper pronunciation in case he needed he it. He is always so afraid <laughs> of pronunciations like that. I just assumed you were just going to. Slide right over and maybe not even say it until you were ready, but he went for it, and I, I applaud you for that. I'm not even going to fine you because you just went for it. You don't even know if I was wrong, though. Yeah, that's also true. Yeah, Temwa so. Chawinga. Ooh, I yeah. like that. Uh, I think that was a much more confident pronunciation. <laughs> Still a little question in the, yeah. in the inflection, but... I'm going better. all the phonetics they provided, so, so their so, fault if I messed it up. <laughs> so tell us about her, Thad. Uh player from again i'm gonna butcher the pronunciation but malawi yeah, you can say malawi, malawi. yeah a little tiny country in That's africa i've always said that um she was she played in sweden for a while she was in china playing but she scored 83 goals in her last 84 games in the chinese super league yeah the what'd you say robert highest scoring women's in the, player in the world world yeah on the I, planet yeah, yeah, higher than Ronaldo. 83 goals. That's absurd. Yeah. Uh, she is prolific goal scorer. Got to see how that translates to a better league. But her sister, Tabitha, I don't know why I, we didn't get Tabitha Chowinga, but anyway. it's a good name. She went to play, uh, is it PSG in Europe and... She has been a good goal scorer there and didn't score as much as Temwa did for the team in China because they were both teammates in China for the Wuhan, whatever it was. Ooh, ooh, Wuhan. I know, I, I, I was going to stay away from that. Sometimes but. I forget that's a real place. <laughs> now, Cody loves names. Did you see that her name means love in her native Tumbuka language? Ooh, I so did. her name means, yeah. I did. So we need to get that name right then. <laughs> Get some respect on love. I will get that. I'm pretty sure I pronounced it right the other night. I did a little pod with Sperry and just talking about that and some other NWSL stuff. But Hopefully we'll learn it very quickly because she'll be scoring goals on the reg. Yes, but will we be able to get a ticket to see her? Yeah. Not a season ticket. Season right. tickets are sold out. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. But yes, of the 11,500 capacity in the new stadium 9,500 season tickets have been sold so the rest of Kansas City will be fighting over 2,000 tickets per game to get into this stadium and and I'm guessing at least through a good chunk of the season those will be hard to acquire yeah we're gonna start another sellout streak here in this in this city might want to get a credential Cody yeah I'm gonna have to and then show up Although I remember I said I put in a fifty dollar deposit. No, he didn't say me. So I guess I. <laughs> <laughs> I need to figure out how to get I that deposit like, back. I just like to talk Cody more than you, Robert. <laughs> I, I like you. All right, gents. Ouch. Any final thoughts here? I'm excited, man, about 2024 here in Kansas City. Excited about the KC Soccer Journal. You know, hey, it's all good stuff. Uh, new year, new us. The the next few years should be amazing opportunity yes. for soccer in this city. Teams rebounding, hopefully. I mean, you never know, but teams rebounding, new stadiums, uh, you know, Copa America, World Cup, uh, potential Women's World Cup coming yeah. to America, and, you know, I'm sure we'll be putting in bids for that. Well, I mean, no, we, I know we put in a bid for it. Uh, so all of that 
it's just like lots of opportunity to watch in person. Exciting and you know, times. Cody's band on this, you know, it's also development for the city and streetcar yes. expanding and other things coming in too. They're pretty exciting. So yeah. Not not just that. That is I love building in Kansas City. I'm obsessed with all of that, but just the idea that the World Cup is the biggest advertisement for the sport in this country. And it is coming here and people will not be able to ignore it. When it's on TV, if you're a sports fan, you know, it's been in on the other side of the world. Games are at weird times. You're a casual sports fan, it may be even like harder to get into it in that way. But you won't be able to ignore this. You know what the biggest question will be though? Will we have refs? <laughs> <laughs> Just been sent off. Some part of strong and long comes off my fun fun things. Got me drinking. My fun fun things got me drinking. My fun fun things got me drinking. Give me beer or whiskey, one or gin. Anything to shake this foot I'm in. My fun fun things got me drinking. My fun fun things got me drinking. Yeah.